So this is George Lee's uh, talking to Sean Patterson, uh, no, Sean no, McGuire no. and John Patterson, uh, who's in the background, and he's just giving Sean an update on his current affairs, and he's being harassed by the police in England for being a political activist. Uh, so, uh, I want to tell you about the Glorious Revolution and the massive uh, breach of human rights that that has become. It's a massive steal. So I've been working for months and months and months on the Shin and the diasporas of people from different continents into new continents so that they can take them over and render them Christian. And that is the biggest cause of death in world history. It means that none of the pagans are left alive anywhere on this world. Uh, and I'm going to try and get that story out tonight. Uh, and it starts in London, uh, and it probably ends in London too, because that is where the New World Order are based, along with the city of Washington in America. That's Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia, uh, and the other uh, corner of the pyramidal power base for the world's fascists is the city of London. Uh, is the Vatican City, sorry. Uh, and that is a massive religious link. And Sean and I now understand the whole of the false religion and all the papal bloodlines that are the biggest jokes in world history. Yeah, that is the Bible author is Arius Copernius Piso, and he's descended to Christopher Martin. And Christopher Martin, in the middle, was the money man on the Mayflower. Uh, and all of that is uh, now... Uh, openly exposed on my website uh, and every time I go and investigate the massive religious schisms uh, you find something sensational so when I looked up Oliver Cromwell on the genealogical history he's the ninth cousin of Queen Victoria and Sean and I have talked about Oliver Cromwell and the massive uh, uh, influence that he held because he was a military government in the Houses of Parliament. Uh, and that is the enslaving of Ireland uh, and losing their sovereignty. It's the, it's the creation of the United Kingdom. Uh, and that is the William and Mary legacy. But it is bigger than William and Mary. They were of orange. One of them was a Stuart and the other one was, uh, I forget, I think she was Braganza or something. Uh, but that that is the the massive pre-planned shin that means like George W. Bush and Scozerny and Mengele, all of them coming out of Germany in 1937 so that they can create the new presidency that is the Bush dynasty. Uh, what we've got there is the massive diaspora of the uh, leadership teams from Germany uh, into America and that is the Zsa, Zsa Gabor families or the uh, Borna Missa families that are the emperors of Austria and all of them are, are on the committee of 300 which I've made videos with both Sean and uh, John Patterson in recent days uh, let me just get you, you guys murmur away about something and I'll try and get my software up on the screen again. But murmur away about something. Well, I tell you what I, I think, um, uh, going way, way, way back to Cromwellian times, I don't know how, uh, well, we then became basically, uh, Ireland was ruled, the whole, we called it Red Ireland, and Ireland was ruled from the UK, it was ru ruled by Britain. Um, but then, you know, George V held an election in 1918, and uh, that was... Uh, ratified by the Irish people in 1819 and um, sorry 1919 and that was basically um, a 32 county sovereign republic of era so is that a time when we got our sovereignty back is what I would ask can, can I just say Sean if I could just jump in you and I have both interviewed a lady from the house of Stuart Eva Stuart Taylor we have indeed yes yes so, sorry, I just thought I'd re remind you of that. Over to you. 
<laughs> not at all, not at all. No, it's 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 incredible, and um, the connections with people now that have, um, I suppose, been put away from um, positions of power is is remarkable. And um, look 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 at the unelected bureaucrats we have in the EU. It's just disgusting. And um, I think what George was um, talking about was uh, with with Cromwell was the fact that it was something like fifty people removed from um, the 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 crown of England, um, be, all because that they were all Catholics and therefore they couldn't go become, uh, uh, sort of sit on the throne. So, so let, let me explain that. So the oh yeah, please, please. The last member of the regime that was the uh, the Catholic dynasty, she actually knew the danger of that, so she converted to Protestantism, and that was Queen Anne, uh, and she had a baby, uh, and it lived right up to the age of 11, another girl, a daughter, uh, for Queen Anne. Uh, and all of a sudden, it uh, miraculously died. <laughs> uh, and none of it is a miracle. All of it is the manipulation of the future of those dynasties. And then when you get to the end of the Shin period, which is 1714... Uh, that is when the German monarchs are called in. And the people that were the much closer, there were 50 claimants to the throne that were closer than uh, uh, George I. Uh, and the reason that they did not take over the throne was simply that they were Catholic. It's a massive, massive murderous tool and that is why all of the Stuart dynasty in those last uh, generations. So Charles the First, he. This is quite touching for me because I, I went to uh, the place on Thames side where Charles the First used to live, and that is uh, the massively important uh, Richmond Castle. Uh, and that Charles the First was executed. Uh, 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 what is the place where they lay the wreaths and it's called White something? Well, White Hall. White it, it, it's the cenotaph at Whitehall. White Hall. White Hall, yeah. So, so, guess what the government did that was totally for only Protestants could have a life in those regimes? Well, and all, all of it is for profit. And all of it is for uh, the uh, massive divide and conquer motives that we've talked about many times already. So, so the uh, what happened next was that as soon as Charles I was beheaded uh, by the government, led by Cromwell, yeah, and that is Cromwell. I'll I'll get you the data on him and how close he was to Queen Victoria uh, in the bloodlines, it's all just massive. Everybody that I look up now, she they end up being the second cousins or the 22nd cousins of Queen Victoria and all of the relatives of the British monarchy. Uh, and uh, so, uh, in 1707, the Act of Union between Scotland and England was ratified the new British Parliament that took, soon took its took in its first Scottish members uh, was formed at that time. That's the Act of Union. And guess what happened at that time? None of you, neither of you, are Scottish, but when I read this, it absolutely stung. Yeah, the new British Parliament soon took it in its first Scottish members. And the man that negotiated the deal and was the Secretary of State for Scotland is the Duke of Buccleuch and Queensbury. And they are now, the, uh, they are the second or third cousins of the Queen of England. And they are Bose Lion. Uh, and they are out of Dalkeith. And that is... Sir John Scott, and all of them got massive hyphenated names. But what happened in that massive steal was that when they, that is, Buccleuch and Queensbury pocketed the bung uh, for uh, 
creating the United Kingdom. And that Queensbury character immediately went. He, he pocketed half of the financing for the deal personally. Yet that is Buccleuch and Queensbury. That is the massive jokes for Harry Enfield that these are the Queensbury rules. Yeah, and that's Harry Enfield that has got on all of my videos blocked. And that is the links to the families that are Chumley Warner. Yeah, do you get it? Yeah. All of those are the aristocratic families that were picked by the Dutchmen and the Germans to lead the new orange regime into the rich list. And so was this coming from, from Austria, I suppose, and Holland? No, it's just a massive battle all across the, the period that I'm looking at. It's only about uh, 35 or 40 years. But so so the, the, the build-up to it is massive. Uh, and that is the... Have you heard of the... The facade that is the... Oh, God, I wish I could get rid of all that. <laughs> because we've got so many little boxes for the... Are you trying to look it up, are you, George? Well, I'm, look, I'm trying to look at the index on my thingy, but it's uh, just a picture of Sean Maguire. <laughs> like I said, if you just want to minimise me, I'll go down. Yeah, I have, do I have done. Uh, no, I mean minimise. The, there's an X, a square, and a minimise uh, button. On the so so let, me, let me just read you the whole synopsis from start to finish and everything that happened and how ruthless it is and how everything is now tilted towards Protestantism. It's the only viable vent if you want to keep your life. That, okay. that, that is literally, you either comply or you die a Catholic. Has that been reversed now? Because I mean, it seems that the one world new one new the new world order, one world religion, seems to be Catholic. I mean, people like Tony Blair changing over to being Catholic, and many around the world. Well, no, no, they've changed the laws of succession. Uh, okay. But that is only after they tried to section me in in two thousand and fifteen. They changed the laws of succession to let a Catholic wife. Uh, be the queen, I think, but that's okay. as close as we get yet yeah, to it being totally independent of bigotry and ethnic and religious hatred. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, people don't realise that it was only in the 50s and 60s in, in, in the north of Ireland that a Protestant uh, landowner or a Protestant um, factory owner actually had his own vote, plus he had the votes of any Catholics he had under his work, you know, working for him, so... Unbelievable the, the the scams that were going on to make it look like it was a um, an orange uh, rather than a green um, six counties. So I'll now just scan through my little synopsis, and okay. there in 1649 is Charles I being executed by Cromwell's Parliament. Yeah, he's lying on his side with his head on the execution instrument, and the axe is up in the air. So what they did in Parliament, after that happened in Whitehall, I think it was, uh, they immediately sold the Palace of Richmond to alleviate their guilt. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, Richmond Palace was a favourite home of Queen Elizabeth, who died there in 1603. It remained the residence of the kings and queens of England until the death of Charles I in 1649, Within months of his execution, the palace was surveyed by order of parliament and was sold for £13,000. Uh, in 1660, this is the synopsis continuing, the monarch was restored, Charles II came to the throne and the lords were summoned to parliament again. Now Charles II was a, a man who was quite savvy, he could see what had happened to his dad. Uh, and he pretended to be a Protestant for a while. He was sent into exile, uh, and but he was the first man in England to have a laugh, and he understands that the Pisos are the Bible authors because he's the first one to grow a pineapple in England. Yeah. 
1661, the Cavalier Parliament first met and sat until January 1679. The bishops sat again in the Lords, and the Act of Uniformity enforced conformity to the English Church. And because I'm so fond of the... Uh, uh, what was the Thomas Moore film called? A Man for All Seasons. I've got the pictures of him uh, pleading to the bishops, uh, and that is only the bishops in the Church of England. Yeah, and you must realise that there are bishops in every one of the denominations too, and all of it is a mass debating massacre. Yeah, mass yeah and so there, there are the bishops, and all of this is published on uh, a website called www.parliament.uk. Yeah, they have got... They're admitting to it anyway. No shame, and there is Justin Welby, who lives in a place quite close to where Richmond used to be, and the name of Richmond in the early days was Sheen, S-H-E-E-N. It's still a suburb of London, uh, and it's right close up to uh, where the boat race is, and uh, right opposite the Parliament building, but a little bit further upstream. So Welby's massive pad is also on the riverbank, and I've told you all about him and his history. Both of you, I think, know that he was Winston Churchill's uh, private secretary's child, uh, and he was the oil uh, business billionaire at the Elf Oil Company in North Africa. Yeah, and that's his journey, as it says on that image, uh, Justin Welby's journey from African oil man to the Archbishop of Canterbury. And when he was created that, uh, there was a massive earthquake in Canterbury. Yeah, and I came across for an interview that year. I can't remember what, it was 2006, I think. Yeah, and there is the, all oh, the massive wongas, him meeting Pope Francis. Yeah, there he is, uh, the secretary for Winston Churchill, and that is his mother. Uh, and there they are in their purple gear. And there is the Elf Oil logos. And that is the Guelph versus Ghibelline Wars across Europe for over a thousand years. It's absolutely sad. I've never been so depressed in any of my investigations until you get to this one. And the whole of the hotel that I'm living in is filled with BBC buffoonery people. Uh, and uh, Terry Gilliam is in the flat next door. It's all just that it's totally evil. <laughs> okay, so uh, there is the Treaty of Dover. In 1670, Charles II agreed in the secret Treaty of Dover to convert to Catholicism in exchange for French subsidies so the warring can continue. Uh, and there is the Treaty of Dover. The King of England will make a public profession of the Catholic faith and will receive the sum of two million of crowns to aid him in his project uh, from the most Christian king in the course of the next six months. The date of this declaration is left absolutely to his own pleasure, and that is the alliance with Louis the Fourteenth and Fifteenth of France, uh, and that continues right to the end of the Shin, which is the launch of the Jacobite Wars, and Je Greg Hallett has actually published the mission of the Shin, uh, and I could show you that again, because I've uh, actually put most of those images on Facebook this afternoon. But let's just get the synopsis done. Yeah, we've got about a half an hour to, to maybe get as much as we can of the synopsis out, and, and uh, that'll, do, that'll do for this uh, hour, George. So in 1673, Parliament passed a Test Act to prevent Catholics from holding office by which the successor to the throne, James, Duke of York, had to resign. Uh, and in 1677, four peers were imprisoned by the House of Lords for claiming that Parliament was automatically dissolved 
because it had not met for over a year. Nothing much left on this topic is my comment there, but Clinton was the Earl of Lincoln and on the tree for fines. Do you get it? Yeah, all of them are, that is Fines of Bedford, and that becomes Ralph Fines and the massive uh, jokes, and it's the same for Dick Cheney, he's Cheney of Bedford, uh, and one of the branches for him is also uh, prominent in Aberdeen. Uh, <laughs> uh, but there is, in 1678, Parliament passed the Test Act to prevent Catholics from sitting in Parliament uh, and there is the man preaching from inside a beer barrel uh, to the totally buffoonish parliamentary audience uh, and the test acts of 60, 1673 were to enforce religious conformity those who refused to receive the sacraments of the Church of England could not vote that's the Church of England and the communion for which you do not even have to give confession. Yeah. yeah? So, so, so you had to be a Protestant, basically. Absolutely. Otherwise, you're dead. <laughs> so, the sacraments of the Church of England, uh, and if you did not do that, you could not vote, you could not hold public office, you could not preach or teach, you could not attend university and you could not assemble for meetings. Maybe that's why they're getting at you, John. <laughs> I suspect he's falling asleep. <laughs> no, 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 I'm listening, George. It's just that my microphone was muted. All right. Listen, they, they, they have tried everything in the book to silence me uh, and... and uh, they, they're paranoid about me exposing Casey Ball. Because I, you know, oh, this you, is much bigger. Please stop talking well, about her, John. I, I know it's bigger, but I'm just saying, you've asked me a question, and they, they Sussex Police are covering up evidence I've got on Casey Ball. That's it. Yeah, but this is about the whole of British history and the total corruption of that. It's not to do with Sussex. It's the whole of European and global history and all the diasporas that happened with the Wooster families and the Bush families, none of the pagans are left in the world. It's bigger than Sussex. Okay? Eventually repealed to let Catholics study, work or vote in 1829 and that is 157 years of religious, political hatred and bigotry and by necessity only having Protestants in the Parliament and impoverished to rid us of the Catholic claimants. In 1679, the first exclusion Parliament met, the Commons drafted a bill to exclude the Duke of York from the succession. In 1680, the second exclusion Parliament met, the exclusion bill was defeated in the Lords, in 1681, the third exclusion parliament met at Oxford for only a week. The last time parliament met outside Westminster. That is Oxford and Cambridge that were immune from bombing through the Great Wars. And all of my videos on those topics have been completely banned by the powers that be. And that is the... Uh, it's not the Wikipedia boss this time, it's the YouTube boss, I forget what his name is. Uh, but that all of it, it, they are now war criminals. And even on those Harry Enfield, Chumley Warner stories, uh, that is massive. Because those are the people that were brought in to be the advisors to William and Mary. And there's a massive plot cooking in Europe, and Sean knows a lot about that because of the Trump Admiralty that were training the Dutch navies uh, and all of it are linked into the massive uh, institutions that you've been referring to this morning but by that policeman's name, John. Yeah, those are the Reuters, Thomson's Reuters families. Yeah, and they were 
the Admiralty leaders in Holland. Yeah, and that is Reuters for Rothschild and the Propaganda. 1681-4, to four, the Tory reaction saw purges, prosecutions and executions of prominent exclusionists, or Whigs as they are now called. Yeah, 1685, Charles II died in February and James II's Parliament first met in May, but after November was continuously prorogued until it was dissolved in July 1687. Uh, and that is, uh, Charles II died of sudden death in Uremia, and it could well be poison. Yeah, Godden versus Hales are the law cases that were happening at the same time. Claims against James II included abuse of suspending and dispensing powers, violating the right of petition, trial of seven bishops and the illegal court of high commission, and those seven bishops then become the glorious seven uh, that launch the plots in Europe with the low countries that perpetrated the massive steel uh, and eventually launched the German kings in uh, 1714 onto the English throne. And the illegal court of high commission were some of the charges levied. Some of the rights declared that no levying taxes or suspending dispensing of laws without approval of parliament, abolished court of high commission, established free elections, free spe speech in parliament, and an end to excessive bail or cruel punishment. So if you get jailed, John, it looks as if it's getting better. <laughs> 1687. I, I, I can tell you, I can just jump in there, um, George, because um, my lawyer is very well aware of the Glorious Revolution, 1687. And um, it's this is all linked, because he told me that this so-called Royal Commission is the first of its kind in 330 years, which is, is the same time scale. It's no coincidence. Well, it's all linked in. The, cumula the accumulation of the story is, the culmination, sorry, is that the German monarchs take over. It's a massive steal. The Dutch did not have much to do with it other than the setting up of the, the naval uh, army that that took them, you know, that took them to Torbay and they won the battles there. But the the mass of steel is that waiting in the back room in Hanover, and you and I have talked about that in the in the distant past in those early videos we made on Queen Victoria's babies. But this is a couple of generations before. Yeah, this is the Hanoverian kings that is George the First to George the Fourth, uh, and that is the that is the corruption of all of the people in Ireland in those rabid religious movements at the Battle of the Boyne, and that is the people that are still in power today that are David Cameron, Boris Johnson. All of them are descended from the concubines for uh, the, the King George lineages that ended up with George III. And I've been reading Greg Hallett's work again on how ruthless the uh, Freemasonic... Uh, medics and the regimes that Rothschild ran uh, in uh, were in uh, actually uh, poisoning and uh, and <laughs> murdering those regimes. Yeah, and that is. I, I think I'll now take you to that part of my my web page. Uh, where is that? Uh, that is quite incredible, George, because it does seem to be that without monarchies and all the rest of it um, in the background, they're there still. Um, but it does seem that the, the hands of power is being handed straight back. Yeah, to it's, a, it's a massive plot. And I've told you all about George W. Bush going there with Mengele and Goebbels and Scozerny. And those are just nicknames for the Austrian nobility 
that are the top men on the Committee of 300 even today. Yeah, that is Heinz and all those families that we talked about on the Committee of 300. It's a massive steal and it's ever so clever. Uh, and because they've done it, and they are the richest people in the world, but they are still the most evil people in the world for that reason. No they one... They right under, uh, under our noses, aren't they? Yeah, no one has a genuine democracy. And I think everybody knows that. And, and what John's saying about the referendum results all being fudged, Jim Fetzer and I were agreeing on that. Yeah, but he could not agree on the bloodlines that were the evil bloodlines. And does anybody know what's happened to him? No, um, you, you, you are the last person that was in contact with him, George. I don't, I don't know what's happened to him. Yeah, I made a video with him last Christmas and he was absolutely gobsmacked by it. Uh, and I've made a couple with him in the spring in that period when I was getting the buzz and the hum on the religious videos. Uh, but... In the last few weeks, he's not available on Skype and he's not even got hyperlink on YouTube. Well, let's hope he's just taking a little break and having a nice Christmas. Yeah, morning. possibly. He'll, he'll be back soon. Uh, so, I forget what I was going to look up. Well, I'll tell you what, we've got about 15 minutes to, 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 to synopsize. To so, I'll keep going. So, 1687... James II issued his Declaration of Indulgence for Nonconformists and sent agents to find potential MPs who would vote for repeal of the Test Acts. The seven bishops prosecuted by James II for refusing to announce the Declaration of Indulgence in their churches were acquitted. That's the famous seven. Uh, and that is, uh, when I was... Uh, last a political activist and I was still communicating and lobbying through email one of my communicants nicknames was Seven I can't remember have any, either of you talked to her? Yeah I've, I've heard of that that was quite a while ago wasn't it? Yeah she, she was a blonde bimbo but and this is the bit that I'm so fond of so at Lambeth Palace uh, this is where this is where Justin Welby fucking lives <laughs> yeah, he's got. He was the Bishop of Durham, and I I used to visit his massive pad up there. But there is Lambeth Palace on the shore of the Thames, and that is where I went to get my honorary. Uh, I'm a fellow of the Pharmaceutical Society, and I went to Lambeth to be awarded that title, and I now get, it's of no interest to me at all. But that is the place. Uh, that is the place on... There is the massive cars. Yet they've got those old-fashioned Rolls Royces parked outside. Justin Welby is an absolute twat. There's no religion in his head. And the whole of it is the worshipping of Jesus who never ever lived. And there is the mansion. <laughs> okay, and down we go. And there is the seven... One of them's Compton. Uh, all of it is obfuscated by cricket and football and all the sporting diversions. Sancroft, Archbishop of Canterbury, Turner, Bishop of Ely, and White, Bishop of Peterborough, resolved to defy James's order. They summoned seven others, of whom four actually came. Lake, Bishop of Chichester, Lloyd, St. Asaph, Trelawney of Bristol, and Ken of Bath and Wales to a meeting of eight. On November to December 1688, the Glorious Revolution occurs. So all of that we've had so far is just the lead up to the launch of William and Mary actually coming to Britain, invaded England and James II fled to France. A convention was summoned to decide the political settlement. Uh, and then we've got William was born in The Hague in the Netherlands. He was an only child and he never knew his father, William II, who died of smallpox before his birth. His mother was Mary, eldest daughter of Charles I of England. William was appointed stadholder, chief magistrate and the captain general of the Dutch forces in 1672 to resist the French invasion of the Netherlands. He forced Louis XIV 
to make peace in 1678 and then concentrated on building up a European alliance against France. In 1678-7, he married his cousin Mary, eldest daughter of James, Duke of York. So they're all convicting each other's mums and dads and children to death. The future James II, the marriage was intended to repair relations between England and the Netherlands following the Anglo-Dutch Wars. What would you guys do? How do you mean, George? Would you stand up for the religion that your mother told you was what you must believe in? Or would you save your lives by becoming a Protestant? I would stand up for what I believed in, whatever that was. And Even although uh, you were going to die? Yeah, yeah. Well, if you think about it, George, that's what we're doing. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it is. We're just standing up for what's right. And um, it doesn't have to be religion. It doesn't have to be politics. It can just be for what you believe is right and what, where we're going and what we're doing. Yeah, so the d division of the non-existent Jesus in the different denominations is not right. That's what needs to be exposed. And it's still going on. Uh, and I don't know whether or not it will ever be able to be reversed. But the, the gods that are in the heavens have been totally written out of the story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it goes back, you know, not just 3,000 years, it goes back um, millennia, in fact. So yeah. It, so, he's important. Well, you see, because I've told all those evil stories about Catholicism, it, the whole of it, it's like a rocking horse, and that is one of the favourite religious parallels that it is, it is the piece of horse, it rocks back and forth, and that is denomination to denomination, uh, and that is the, 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 the whole of the meaning of life, is divide and conquer, so that we can explore and then take over the whole of the world's landmass and all of that world's wealth. Yeah, and they've been using religion for centuries, so wouldn't it be great if we all stood up and said, hey, it doesn't matter what our beliefs are personally, but let's be a-religious. Absolutely. But, well, unless you believe in God, and you don't believe that there's a creator, and someone yes. is looking down on you as we make the video. No, I don't believe there is someone looking down on me while we make this video. You don't believe in deities? I do believe in deities. I don't believe there is someone looking down on us while we are making this video. I think we are free to do what we want to do, and we can be spiritually aware and walk in our own creativity, if you like. And um, uh, heaven and hell is here on earth. I've seen people living in hell. I've seen people living in heaven. And uh, it's up to us to, to make it heaven for all of us. Right. That's, that's my view. Yeah. Well, I personally believe in the gods, but I don't know how many there are. And we've talked about that, and it sometimes offends your listeners in Ireland. Anyway, <laughs> 1690, Parliament passed an act establishing a Commons Commission of Public Accounts. In May 1689, Parliament declared war on France following the wishes of the new King, William III. For the next 25 years, with only a truce of five years, England was gay engaged in a long and expensive war with its neighbour across the Channel. That is World War One. Yeah, yeah. That, it's absolutely massive, and the death toll is uh, for one of the sides is way over six hundred thousand. This increased the parliamentary control of revenue, helped to ensure the success of the Bank of England created by statute in 1694. For the investors in the bank could be confident that their loans to the government would be repaid by parliamentary taxation appropriated for that purpose. So all of it is a mass of steel, and the interest rates on those first loans, John, were 1,260%. Disgusting. <laughs> uh, and George, George, are you saying that because of one of my ancestors, Sir William Patterson, by any chance? If yeah, I just wonder if he... <laughs> I think he is, John. I think he is. No one's published the Jews that came across with William the Conqueror in 1066 
They are the launch of the banking dynasties in America, in Britain and eventually in America. The names are still anonymous, like they are with the Fed Reserve. That, that they were not allowed to know who those people were. Uh, and many of them were Freemasons. I've discovered some of them are uh, uh, Isaac Newton and all of the leading Freemasons. If you're a mathematical genius and you're good with a, an account book, book uh, like Isaac Newton, he's popping up all over uh, Dundee as a body double and his haircut is exactly the same as it was when he was actually in the Bank of England. But he gets involved in the making the decisions on who are making counterfeit coins and notes and they get their head cut off. And he does not even have to consult anybody else in that chore incredible incredible i tell you what i hope i hope uh, we don't get our heads chopped off or our hands chopped off and we start printing our own money in ireland until the eu to feck off uh-huh so 1694 the bank of england was founded by parliamentary statute in april the triennial act providing for parliamentary elections every three years was passed queen mary died and william iii became sole ruler in december Revelations of a plot to assassinate William III led to the drafting of an oak of loyalty to the king, rejected by many Tory MPs and peers. And there is the Earl of Portland, who is the friend of Chalmondley Warner, and those are the families that then went across periodically to Holland and to German, the German coast, uh, and they are the planners of everything that was the launch of Orange all across Europe. And that is the Netherlands, that is Luxembourg, that is Belgium. Yeah, and none of them are associated with being political countries. And the EU has now consumed all of them. And that is the massive joke and piss take that we have got dozens of political representatives all over the world when all we need is to have local representation and actual genuine ballots. It's incredible. They're just, they're very clever, aren't they? And down below the Earl of Portland is Mr. Chumley Warner, played by Harry Enfield. Do you get that? He's the friend of Portland, uh, and that is Cholmondley, uh, and they live in massive mansions, and they're right next door to the Duke of Northumberland, eh, the Duke of Westminster, if they're not actually the Duke of Westminster's, one of his subtitles. It's just, just stunning. And many of my YouTube videos have been eh, blocked by the BBC for playing Chumley Warner as a comedian or as Adolf Hitler dressed up. Yeah, and that is 1697. We get to the end of those massive... Uh, wars, that's the Treaty of Ryswick, ended the Nine Years' War. Uh, mainland Europe, Ireland, Scotland, North America, South America, Asia, and ended, that is World War I. Yeah, and then 1700, the 11 year old Duke of Gloucester, last surviving child of Princess Anne, and second in line to the throne, died. Yet yeah, mysteriously at the age of 11. And when I read the Rothschilds' methodology for poisoning the kings, rendering them mad, yeah, and for not allowing them to have babies, yeah, it, all of it, it absolutely shook me yesterday afternoon. Okay, that's June 1701. Uh, and Parliament passed the Act of Settlement to prohibit Catholics from sitting on the throne and placing the succession with the House of Hanover. Outrageous behaviour, isn't it? Yeah, and there is the House of Hanover with all those German bloodlines and all of the banking dynasties that then emerged from there. That is the Goslings, that is the Berenberg Banks, that is the Piety Bank, but that one is not from Hanover. That was, it is the Piety Bank is from Rome uh, and Naples, and that is the earliest Pisa popes. 
that launched the earliest banks. Do you get it? That is the reason why Rupert Murdoch launched the whoring joke. Yeah, whore was one of the first banking dynasties in England. It's the oldest profession. Do you get it? Yeah, absolutely. Do you remember that one, John? When uh, Sean Hoare was murdered by Rupert Murdoch's press. <coughs> yes, I remember that very well, uh, George. So 1701, James II died and Louis XIV recognised his son as James III, the old pretender, as rightful King of England and Scotland, prompting Parliament to legislate for an oath requiring a public abjuration of the Stuarts' claim to the throne. 1702, William died, and there are all the massive leaders in those battles all over the world, and there are the casualties, 100, 250,000 on one side, and 500 to 600,000 on the other side. 1707, the Act of Union between Scotland and England was ratified. The new British Parliament soon took it in its first Scottish members. That is Buccleuch. That's the Duke of Buccleuch. Let me show you the pictures. There is... It's a shame we won't be seeing the pictures on the audio. Well, they're very familiar. They are John Scott. The Duke of Queensbury is the current equivalent of the Duke of Buccleuch and the Dukes of Queensbury are just the same. They're so massive that they cannot uh, have a lineage that only has one title. And they are the Montagues, and you must know about them now, Sean. Indeed, yeah. Yeah, so there's James Douglas, second Duke of Queen. And have you been to uh, <laughs> uh, Barnet, John? Barnet? Sorry, because I, I mute my, my mute my microphone. Have I been to Barnet? I've been to Barnet on the end of the tube. Right. So I when, used to have a friend that lived there. When the Buccleuch Queensbury man that was the Secretary of State for Scotland took the money uh, to make Scotland part of the United Kingdom, he put half of it in his own accounts. Yeah, and he became the most popular Scotsman that England has ever known, and that is why when he reached, when he reached Barnet in England, there was a massive crowd chanting his name, and that is because he sold his country to the United Kingdom. Yeah, and all of that is published openly, and he's got massive castles. There's one, Drumlandric Castle, over on the west coast. Uh, they've got uh, Albemarle, and they are the Dukes and Earls of Douglas, and that is Dr. Ian Fingland's family clan lineage, the man who tried to murder me, yeah, and shut me the fuck up. Yeah, that is the Douglas Buccleuch lineage, and let me show you the one that is closest to the Queen of England. He's her third cousin, and he lives in fucking Dalkeith. He's a, he's a neighbour. Richard Scott, 10th Duke of Buccleuch. That was married into Bowes Lion, yeah, in Dalkeith, as well as in Glams and in County Durham. Yeah, and that is castles and mansions all over Scotland. The Duke of Buccleuch and Queensbury. And for Harry Enfield, that is those boxing Queensbury rules. So George, George, we have about five minutes left if you want to try and wrap up what you, you can in that five minutes or, or maybe we can leave it to another day. Well, well, let's just get... So there's a bit on the Chumley Warners. Inquiries about access to these papers should be addressed to the Most Honourable, the Marquis of Cholmondley, Cholmondley Estates, 10 St James's Place, London, SW1A1NP. Do you remember the videos... On St James's Place for Rothschild, John. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that is the Chomley families. And guess where it is? It's in. Uh, it's either. It's, it's, the Duke of Westminster's Mayfair. But I forget what the other. 
it's got the Piccadilly. Yeah, everything that is Piso it is corrupt. Yeah, yeah Piccadilly. Yeah. <laughs> is that where St James's Place is in Piccadilly? Yeah, it, it's the it's the tube that's virtually near the Green Park. Yeah. It's so, all within walking distance. So so basically, at the end of the shin, uh, I wish I could get the. Well, don't be worrying about visuals there, George. Well, I just I just wish I could get the uh, the culmination of that that I've done this morning. Uh, and I put, actually put it on Facebook through the morning. Yeah. Uh, but that that is the the end of the shin as Greg Hallett planned it and showed it. That it was a it was to begin with allegedly a chute. That is a a, a massive battles without weapons. But in 1714, when the Germans come across. That is the launch of the real, uh, you know, there are already world wars happening all over the world and how they can proclaim that it is a chut without weapons, uh, I do not know. But oh, what, a massive fist fight. Yeah, so, so what happened at the end of that era, because the, you're not allowed to have a Protestant on the throne or even in public office, uh, sorry, you're not allowed to have a Catholic... Okay. Yeah, in public office or even at school, getting educated, that is the launch then of the massive wars. And the Duke of Cumberland, uh, his he was one of the Hanoverian kings. I think he was the son of George the Third or George the uh, Second, and he committed the massacres at Culloden of the. Jacobite troops and all of it is again covenanters all of it is about denominations of Christianity fighting against each other so that they can become the most powerful it's absolutely lethal uh, and, and, and when I learned that there are, when those Germans came in and were gifted the title King George the First there were 50 claimants in the Catholic lineages that were closer to Queen Anne than them. And Shall they were we... discarded because they were Catholics? Absolutely, that is the only motive and it is a sordid way to run the country and all of the people that are the buffoons that still run it are the legacy of that. That's Boris Johnson. They were the shag bags and the concubines and the bastard children of Jesus. King Billy. King Billy and all those folk that have been in corrupted Chipping Norton and all those places ever since and that is Royal Wooten Bassett and all the other stories I've told you in the interim period in the last three or four months it's taken me ages to get down to what actually happened and I, I just believe that the gods are absolutely mortified that, <laughs> that uh, no one believes in them and all of it is all written by the Piso man that declared himself to be the Father God. Yeah. yeah, yeah. well, let's hope that people are waking up and listening to what you have to say, George. I mean, so much information in this last hour, and I really want to thank you for it. And have, and, you, uh, he have you heard of some of the massive parodies, the, the clubs that were run at that time? Hellfire. The Hellfire Club, yeah. Did, you had them in Ireland too. And what they do is they mock the religion. Yeah. Yeah, so you get Virgin Mary's pies and things, uh, and all of it is a pistic, and they, so that they can become full members and full fascists, they are obligated to go on missions to Italy and drink themselves stupid. Uh, and that is the launch of uh, uh, the stripping profession and everything that is lewd, it was launched out of a place called High Wycombe, where I got my biggest concussion in my rugby life. <laughs> uh, and the, you, you, next one, we can cover all of those things. Yeah, because okay. I'm, I'm yeah, I mean, 
they really are creating Sodom and Gomorrah all over the world, aren't they? Well, it's them. just, it's just, if there is a God, they're absolutely <laughs> going to get the revenge on them. And that's why I still believe that there is a God, because of the pathologies that occur to all of those people and the off piste accidents. I don't believe they're accidents. That is the deity that created us and the world and the universe and they are no longer uh, important uh, in the story as it is told at the moment. Uh, anyway, uh, shall we stop? Hello? Hello?